What's up guys, you're Bigly here. Today we are not going to look into topics like muscle gain or fat loss and stuff like that, but rather look into a much more serious problem in the society, the childhood obesity. Yeah, you got me right. The sugars not only caught up to the adults, but it caught up to the children also. Okay, so when children grow up, parents are the role models and the habits that the parents follow is the habits that children also follow. So in that case, the obesity pandemic in children was inevitable. Initially in the 1950s and 1970s, all the governments tried to regulate the nutrition of the adults and were trying to battle obesity because it was giving rise to diabetes. Then a lot of social interest people recommended that it has to get started from the childhood. So the government spent a lot of money, the, may it be the Indian government or may it be the American government. All these governments spent a lot of money in studying how this obesity could be prevented in the childhood so that they grow into a healthy adult. But from 1970s, it slowly started and in 1990s and even up to 2000, they were again repeatedly following the same failure model of reducing calories and increasing activity. In children, when they start playing more, they tend to become more hungrier and they tend to eat more. So a lot of extensive studies spending millions and millions of dollars came up with a conclusion that when they were significantly fed lesser calories and predominantly the main concept was reduced fat intake, which did not aid in any significant reduction in the obesity rate. Rather, it backfired in the opposite direction of increasing the obesity of the children. Until 2004, there were no breakthroughs done. Then a lot of scientists decided that rather than approaching this concept of fat, protein, carbohydrate, we have to target individual food items. That's when there was a study called as the Romp and Chomp study conducted by the Australian University from 2004 till 2008. This study involved children ranging from the age of 0 to 5. The main concept of this study was twofold. The first concept was reduce the consumption of sugary drinks and replace them with either water or milk. The wholesome food or water to be replaced with the sugar filled drinks was the number one priority. And the second priority of the study was reduce artificial snacks and replace them with dishes made out of fruits and vegetables. When we say artificial, it could be your chips, it could be the cookies, it could be the candies, it could be the jellos or whatever it is in place of them. They were replaced with healthy fruits and vegetables or dishes made out of this. Significantly, they were able to reduce the obesity in children up to 3%. Okay, so the study was done in this way. There was one part of the group that did not do any of these practices and there was other group, the concentration group where these were implemented that is no sugar replaced with water and milk and no snacks replaced with fruits and vegetables. This group significantly reduced obesity by 3%. You may ask for a four year study, 3% is quite less. But if you look at the other group, which did not follow, showed an increase in obesity for more than 10%. Following that, there was one more initiative done by the schools in Northern England. And this was called as Ditch the Fizz, which was an initiative to not 
drink any aerated sugary drinks and when this initiative was started in six schools the initial thing was not to drink any of these canned aerated juices and they were able to significantly reduce the consumption of these sugary drinks by 150 ml per child and if you look at the end of the study in an year they were able to reduce the obesity by 0.5 percentage and there was one group which did not follow the ditch the fizz thing and those children showed 7.5 percentage increase in obesity the reason why i am quoting these kind of studies is not just to showcase the findings but these studies show us a clear pathway of handling health in children you cannot go and tell to a child that you should diet or you should exercise more children tend to play well make them play well and when it comes to food choices prepare tasty dishes made out of fruits and vegetables rather than having the stored snacks here i would like to tell one important thing about the stored snacks you know the sugars are available for the past 200 years almost and that did not give us obesity and uh, the diabetes but if you look at the climb of diabetes and obesity it started after 1970 which is the invention of high fructose corn syrup okay fructose you know like if you look at a common table sugar it has glucose and fructose glucose is a six headed carbon molecule and then fructose is a five headed molecule and fructose is something that can be metabolized only in your liver which means it cannot be directly used for energy in the muscles or brain which means the tendency of them to convert into fat is higher when you consume fruits it's not a big deal because you get only very few fructose which can be utilized by the liver but has a lot of fiber and water which makes it better but when it comes to high fructose corn syrup 100 grams of corn syrup contains almost 90 plus grams of fructose which was figured out to be the main cause of increasing obesity pandemic so when we are feeding our children we need to be sure that these kind of artificial ingredients are not present when we just avoid these artificial ingredients and control the amount of sugars your kid is not going to become obese okay we were looking at you know like how adults become fat and we were trying to figure out solution for that and today we just go a step before that and saw the children and i would like to take you to a step even further about the pregnancy usually in pregnancy women have a lot of craving and they end up eating a lot and because of the invention of snacks you see more and more cases of excessive weight gain in pregnant women and things like gestational diabetes there is a study by dr david ludwig which says that if the mother had gestational diabetes or had excessive weight gain during her pregnancy the chances of the child developing the obesity gene and the diabetes gene is three times higher than a normal child which means if you don't take care of your craving with the right food choices during your pregnancy you are not only developing health complication for yourself but you are passing on much dangerous health complications to your child which is something that no parent would want all species want their young ones to be stronger smarter better and live longer than us because of giving up the taste buds and trying to sort on for these artificial snacks and sugary drinks could be devastating for your younger ones
So the message is loud and clear. When it comes to children, you cannot force them to do a diet, but you can give them the right alternative. And when it comes to fruits and vegetables being healthy and milk being healthy, I'm not asking them to just add on in your diet, but rather try to take away all those fizzy drinks and those artificial snacks step by step and replace them with tasty alternatives from these natural sources. Your child is going to start developing the taste and liking for the natural food, which is also going to make them healthy during their childhood phase and make them grow into a much healthier and responsible adult. Not only that, they become much smarter with whole foods than with the junk food. With that message, I hope that you all liked the video. To know more informative content on nutrition, fitness and wellness, do subscribe to my channel immediately and make sure you press the bell icon so that you get notification of all my new videos. If you like the video, give me a like, comment on the video about what you would like to see next and please do share it with your friends. Good things need to be shared. Share the message to your friends. Until the next episode, it is your bigly. Over and out.